In this video, we are going to discuss the fifth part on how to attack the opponent's king. We are going to again discuss three critical diagrams that can help you to improve your game by 100%. And these three critical diagrams can definitely help you to improve your game. So I don't want to waste any further time, so let's quickly jump into the video. So we have the diagram number one on the board. This time we are playing with the black pieces. And here I want all of you guys to pause the video and try to think what are you going to play in this position if you are playing with the black pieces. Okay, so what's happening in this position? First of all, black skin looks pretty uh, safe to me. And definitely on the other hand, white skin also looks pretty safe. But can we really try to threaten the white king is the question. So like... The pawn structure is very safe, is very closed up. That's the reason we think that the white king is extremely safe. But if you found the move, e5, which is a very strong move, congratulations and kudos to you. After e5, what we are doing basically, it doesn't, this move isn't obvious because there are two pawns guarding the e5 square. So it looks like playing e5 is simply a blunder. But after e5, if you try to look closely, we are trying to open up the position and try to make the opponent's king weak. So after e5, white is having two options to capture the pawn. So for, for example, if it, white doesn't react to anything and plays a move like knight to f3, simply developing the pieces. We are happy to trade off the pieces and now we play the move knight e6, putting more pressure and now definitely it's a triple attack and the f4 pawn is also hanging so basically black is already winning. So after e5, white must take the pawn. So first of all, if I takes with the d pawn, which looks much obvious, after d into e5, we play the move d4. We try to open up the position as well now. After d4, first of all, we open up the bishop now, which is extremely strong. And on the other hand, we are trying to open up the rook. And on the third hand, we are trying to open up the king, trying to weak the king. So after d4, if white plays the move, for example, e4 not capturing the pawn, we can simply play the move d3 check and we'll win a piece and eventually the game. So white must capture the pawn. And after pawn takes, we simply capture with the rook. We can also capture with the queen followed by queen into b2, putting pressure on the knight on d2, but simply rook into d4 is already more than enough to win because we are going to give some deadly discoveries to the white king. That's the point. So this position is already winning. And if white doesn't do anything and plays again knight f3, we are happy to capture the pawn, give a check and capture the queen on the next move. So it's already win. So that's what happens if white captures the e pawn with the d pawn. So now let's try to discuss what happens if white captures with f into e5. After f into e5, I'm pretty sure that this move is now pretty obvious to you guys. We push the pawn to f4. We try to open up our rook. After f4, if white captures the pawn in this position, we simply capture the pawn on d4 in this position, giving a check. And once the king moves, we can simply play the move knight to e6, bringing the maximum pieces into the game as I always say. And now the idea is to simply capture the pawn with the knight. White can't really defend it because it's a triple attack. So black is completely winning the game. So this is what happens if white captures the pawn with the pawn. If white simply moves the piece back trying to defend the piece, we simply capture the pawn and giving a check and also hitting the knight. So white is forced to capture the pawn, but here after bishop into e5, the position is already lost for white because the king is never going to be the safe. Pawn cannot capture the bishop because the pawn is simply pinned up. So the position is completely winning for black. You can already just feel the position. The king is in the center, extremely weak, no way to run. It's completely winning. So this was the first diagram, very critical diagram. This is also known as the breakthrough. Basically, when there is a close position, you try to make a breakthrough, which is not so obvious and it's winning. So this was the diagram number one. So now let's move on to the diagram number two. Okay, so we have the diagram number two on our board again. This time we are playing with the black pieces. And again, I want all of you guys to pause the video and try to think, how are you going to continue this position if you are playing with the black pieces? Okay, so first of all, what's happening in the position? Definitely our king is extremely safe, but opponent's king doesn't look really safe because uh, we are having major pieces on a, a lying on the king. But the rook on g1 is doing a good job covering all the light squares, so we can't really make the opponent's king. But 
as the possession is closed, so the opponent is feeling very safe in this possession. And on the other hand, white is thinking to capture the rook. So if you guys found the move g5, which is an extremely strong move, bravo. After g5, what's the idea? We again want to open up the possession. So after g5, white is having many options in the possession. He can capture the rook. He can capture the pawn. <clears throat> so after g5, if white captures the rook, we are happy to capture the knight with the h pawn. And now this time, we are already opening up the h file. So if the possession is already winning for black, how? After h into g4, if white plays the move, <clears throat> something like f into g5, we can already going to play the move rook into h4 check. Pawn takes and queen h3 is simply a mate. You can't really stop it. So if after h into g4, white plays something like queen f1 maybe, we can simply again catch the pawn, give a check. White is forced to capture the hip and now we play the move g3 check. Uh, here if king, g3, king h3, we can simply push the pawn and mate the white king. And if rook into g3, we can happily capture the queen because it's a free queen. So that's what happens if white plays the move queen f1. So now if white plays the move rook f1, again we can sack the rook, give a check, and it's going to be a mate. It's a fourth mate. So that's exactly what happens if white plays the move knight into g4. Coming on to the second, uh, what happens if white plays the move h into g5? Again, we can simply push the pawn to h4 and our idea is to simply capture the g3 pawn. Now white can't do anything, it's completely over. GH4, we have mate in one. And if uh, knight into G4, again, we can capture the pawn. It's a double check and the possession is over. It's a mate. <clears throat> that's what happens if white captures the pawn with the H pawn. The only thing that's left here is to capture the pawn with the S pawn, which looks the same, which looks uh, extremely safe in this, in this position for white. But after F into G5, we again push the pawn to F4. What's the idea? We want to remove the h4 defender in the position by pushing up the f4 pawn. So after f4, here fgh4, we can simply capture the pawn and it's a mate. So if white plays bishop into f4, we can again capture the bishop. Because after pawn takes, we simply, it's a mate. You can't do much. That, that's exactly what's happened. And if you don't capture the bishop, it's completely lost. We are already a piece up. So after g 5 after f4, if white plays move queen f1, playing something else, not trying to react. But this time simply f into g3 check. And after rook g3, simply queen g3, it's a mate. And if you try to play king h3, trying to keep the maximum pieces, simply g2 check, it's a mate. You can't do much. So that's exactly what happens if, if uh, white plays the move f into g5. So that's the whole point of playing the move g5, trying to get a breakthrough, even if this such a safe position white is thinking white is having. Like definitely g5 is the move which isn't obvious. So if you're trying to find the g4 and if, if you found out the g5, uh, g5 move, I'm pretty impressed by your skill. So yeah, this was the second position or the second diagram. So now let's move on to the final diagram of the day, the third diagram. Okay, so coming on to the final diagram of the day and the most hardest, trickiest diagram of the day, the third diagram. This time we are playing with the white pieces and I want again all of you guys to pause the video and try to think calmly because it's not such an obvious position. Try to think calmly, try to find the best move and try to resume the video. Okay, so what's happening? So first of all, both the king looks extremely safe because it's a close possession so yep it's extremely safe and white pieces are extremely happy having the season and weaknesses all black pieces are tied up on the queen side we are having a strong g5 pawn so yeah definitely practically speaking up white is looking very good so if you guys found out the move d6 it looks like we are trying to open up the bishop and what black can't with capture with the pawn because we captured the rook but guys here Black can simply play the move c6. And after c6, you are not having any breakthrough. Black is simply defending the c6 pawn with the knight. Now, Black is ready to capture the pawn and nothing much is happening in the position. So, it's a bad move. You must not play it. But if you found the move, f congratulations and bravo. But the position is not yet over. After f4, here Black is having two options to capture the pawn. If e into f4 
Now what's the move? Try to pause the video and try to think. E5. Again, pushing up the pawn, sacrificing the pawn. And it looks like why white has sac sacrificed two of his pawn and gave black the opportunity of making two pass pawns. Guys, in return, we got this open position, just a free fling position. As we know that black's all pieces are tied on the queen side, it's better to open up the position and try to weak the opponent king. After f into e5, again my question is the same. Try to pause the video and try to think, how are you going to continue the position? Okay, this time we found the move d6. Excellent. After d6, after queen into d6, finally we play the move rook to d2, trying to open up the d5. Queen f6, and now comes the move queen to c3. Targeting the pawn. And here, the only way black can defend is to play the move knight to f7. But now comes the move rook to d7. Double attacking on the knight. So after knight to d6, we simply capture the pawn and it's completely lost. Rook to e5, rook to e8 is coming up, rook to f5 is coming up. Rook to, if, if the knight moves, rook f7 can be a deadly move. The position is already lost for black. That's how you must do it. So that's what happens if you try to open up the position and if black captures with the e pawn. Now let's try to discuss what happens if black captures with the g pawn. After g into f4, this time we play the move g5, trying to capture the pawn and now finally the e5 pawn is a weakness so we push the pawn. The pawn cannot capture the pawn because black will simply lose the rook, the queen is forced to capture the pawn and now it's all the same. Rook d2 hitting the queen, queen goes to f6 in order to defend the pawn on e5 and here comes the move queen to c3, double attacking the pawn on e5. Knight to f7, the only move. Rook to d7, attacking the knight, knight to d6, we capture the pawn and here, okay, first of all, you must not capture with the queen because you lose all your advantage because whenever you are attacking your opponent's king, try to keep the maximum pieces on the board and always try to keep the queens on the board because the queens are the most powerful piece in the game of chess. So rook into e5 uh, and here, black plays a very strong move, knight into e4. The position is winning, but I still want all of you guys to pause the video and try to find a brilliant move in this position for the white side. Okay, so it's not an easy position. If you, if you, if you play, try to play a move like rook e8 check, trying to think to capture the queen, it's not really working because of king e8. You do not win the queen because the knight is simply defending the queen. So there are many ways to win the game, but if you found the brilliant move, which is rook in the g5, I'm super impressed. After looking at g5, what's the idea? If you try to capture the queen, it's a mate in one. The bishop covers it and it's a back rank mate. And if the queen captures the rook, queen h1, queen h8 check, queen to g8 is the fourth move. And this time we simply capture the queen and the game is over. It's a mate. So that's how you do it. You simply try to open up the position in this position. g6 is not a good move to execute in this position, but to simply go for the king. Play the move f4, open up the position and try to create open lines and weaknesses. And once you get it, all the pieces on the king queen side are simply useless and you are the one attacker to simply jump in and win the game. So these were the three critical diagrams that can help you to improve your chess knowledge and skill and it helps you to attack your opponent's weak king. <clears throat> so this was the fifth part, uh, the breakthrough. And I'm pretty sure this video might have helped you to improve your game. If it did, then make sure to like the video, share this video to everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel. There are many topics left to cover up. So I don't want to waste any further time. I'm going to see you soon. So till then, stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Chess.